for joining us. I'm Lauren Bennett. Welcome to another episode of City Connection, a quick look at city happenings so you can dive deeper into what's going on in your city and stay connected. In our first story, we're taking it from the top, the top of the Granada Garage, that is, where the city's sustainability and resilience department is putting the finishing touches on a spectacular solar and battery energy storage system. So we are putting solar on the roof of the Granada Garage and it's gonna cover the entire roof and produce enough electricity to back up this building, including the offices that are here, including some critical facilities. And it's also gonna offset the electricity that is used at the central library across the street. Additionally, in the basement, we've installed some batteries so that when we have grid outages, we can isolate from the grid and we can keep this building up and running. The batteries also enable us to reduce our consumption of electricity from the grid during times that um, electricity is the most expensive during peak usage hours. Um, so there's cost savings there as well. The solar is structured through a power purchase agreement where we will be buying the electricity from the installer, who will also be the owner of the project. We'll be buying it at a contracted rate, which is a very competitive rate. It's um, less than what's projected to be the rate from the utility. And the battery was provided through uh, an incentive program, so it's no cost to us. We've minimized the visibility because this is a very beautiful community, this is a very special and historic district, and we really focused on trying to harmonize the importance of that history and that character with also the importance and the uniqueness of our um, community's vulnerability to climate change and our need to prepare for the future and really the present. In addition to increasing local renewable electricity capacity, the project will help improve air quality and energy reliability. It'll also keep cars parked up here cooler on hot days. Well, the Granada Garage isn't the only city facility to install a battery system. Recently, the city installed one at the Cater Water Treatment Plant, and that battery energy storage system improves the resilience of the city's water system, and as we're about to show you, it's actually saving ratepayers money. Moving water from its sources, treating that water, distributing it to all the homes and businesses in Santa Barbara, then collecting wastewater and treating that wastewater is incredibly energy intensive. In fact, the Water Resources Division is the city's largest energy customer. But that may not be the case for very long. That's because the city is making a huge push to reduce its reliance on grid-supplied electricity. A new battery energy storage project at Cater Water Treatment Plant is a prime example. One, two, three. This is a battery backup project that is going to provide um, electric power backup to the pump stations at Cater Water Treatment Plant. Today marks a very significant day for the city of Santa Barbara in our journey towards a clean and resilient energy future. Uh, we are standing before the largest battery backup system at any city facility and the first battery backup system to come online. What we have here today is a, a battery backup system that is powering some of the key energy uses at the facility, which are large pumps that we use to push water to upper reaches of the city service area and then all the way down the, the coast to Carpinteria. And since the city purchases its electricity exclusively from carbon-free sources, when these batteries are used, they won't have contributed polluting greenhouse gases. During normal operations, we can use these batteries to um, reduce our power consumption at peak times when electricity is more expensive. We can discharge the batteries and then we can charge them uh, overnight or early in the morning when electricity is less expensive. So over time, it'll save us quite a bit of money. And that makes that power also then available to our customers, uh, making, making our grid more reliable. And to top it all off, City staff was able to secure a state grant covering 100% of the project costs. So what we're standing before today is a $3.14 million battery project that we got along with the 10-year operations and maintenance contract with no dollars out of pocket. 
So I'll just reiterate that, no dollars out of pocket. So that's a big deal. Like at the Granada Garage, the Sustainability and Resilience Department intends to pair the battery energy storage system with a solar array, further increasing its resiliency in the case of a natural disaster. Speaking of which, no natural disaster seems to afflict our area more than wildfire. Well, the Parks and Recreation Department and Fire Department have teamed up to improve the community's fire resilience and reduce the risk and severity of wildfires. Up next, see how the Wildfire Resiliency Project is supersizing the concept of defensible space in our open space parks. We've collaborated with Parks and Recreation to do some fire mitigation work, some trail restoration to our city open spaces. Um, so in the background today you can see our brand new five-person vegetation management crew uh, accomplishing some of those goals. With the Coastal Conservancy grant that we're working under right now and um, a CAL FIRE grant that we recently were awarded, we're targeting primarily city open spaces and front country trails. So we have about 18 spaces included under that plan. We have our uh, vegetation management crew that came on board in October. They're all aspiring to get into the fire service to get permanent jobs. Uh, a lot of them are local, willing to come out here and help, help serve the city of Santa Barbara. We're super happy to be collaborating with the fire department and the work the vegetation management crew is doing. It meets not only fire safety goals, but also land management goals. So um, not only are they targeting species and plants that pose a fire risk, but also invasive species that we don't want to kind of take over the native vegetation communities that we have here. We are fortunate in this community to have some really beautiful open spaces. And a large portion of those are in our wildland urban interface area. So Parma Park, Schofield Park, are some of our trail systems that are within the city boundaries. We can enjoy some of these awesome, beautiful views. But of course, with that comes a proper balance for when uh, our next wildfire comes through and how we can help buffer those areas before those fires reach down into our, our city proper. You know, we have a responsibility for city-owned properties, right, to maintain our defensible space for them. You can see that we're right adjacent to these homes and they don't have the ability to do the work on city property. So we need to be good neighbors and do our part and that will show them that they need to do their part as well. But it definitely all falls on private property on that homeowner, that property owner, to do their defensible space. It has a rich fire history through a lot of our open spaces. So taking a look at some of that data from the past fires we've had, some fire modeling technology that's come out that helps us predict when and where these fires might occur and how they might move through an incident, really lays out a plan for us of how to strategically do some vegetation management and some park restoration to get these areas up to um, a nice fire buffer zone. Uh, it's only a matter of time when the next one comes through. So let's do some preactive measures now uh, instead of some reactive measures that we're used to seeing on the TV. The collaboration balances the expertise of both teams to manage vegetation while protecting the natural ecosystems within the city's open space parks. Speaking of parks, the city just finished a number of improvements here at the Eastside Neighborhood Park. The project improved accessibility and playground equipment for kids of all ages. We are celebrating the renovation of Eastside Neighborhood Park. It's been a three-year project. What we've done here today is replace our little kids' playgrounds, put in a new playground for larger kids, add adult fitness equipment, a walking path, make it increasingly accessible. We've done turf and irrigation and tree upgrades, and really the whole goal is to make this a safe, fun, accessible place for the neighborhood. Prior to the renovation, misuse and unsafe behaviors were common at the park. Addressing these issues through improvements with community input and thoughtful design creates a sense of shared ownership and restores safety to the park. Plus we see positive activities. We see families, we see young people, we see you know, teenagers, we see any number of people using the park, however they choose to use the park, but in a safe um, and enjoyable manner. 
I'd like to recognize and thank the community members that engaged the park in design and collaboration with city staff. This collaboration is in keeping with the park's history. The local residents played an important role in the early park development back in the 1970s, and now we can celebrate that partnership again. A $150,000 community development block grant kick-started the initial renovation of the park's restroom. Leveraging the success of the first renovation, the Parks and Recreation Department requested an additional $350,000 to support further park improvements. With those two grants, the City Council was able to provide matching funds backing the additional upgrades. I mean, what a beautiful space. I love that it has the different age ranges. My son is three and a half. So he'll love it over there, and this is perfect. Projects like this are so critical for neighborhoods like this. It's a densely populated neighborhood. People don't have a lot of their own space. And so to be able to go to a park and to be there without having to pay for anything, to just play and be free, that's why these projects are so critical and that we continue to find ways to make park improvements throughout the city. The improvements are part of a larger project that's being completed as funding allows. The next phase will focus on the community garden space, guided by input from the gardeners that use it. Well, that's it for this edition of City Connection. Stay in the know and follow the city on our social platforms and be sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter, City News and Brief. And remember, we're always there for you online at SantaBarbaraCA.gov. Thanks for watching City Connection. We'll see you next time.